where my kids were at. And one of the things, I was at home one day, and I got a call from my buddy Mike. He said, Westrom, he said, you hear that enrichment program or battle of the books? And I said, nope. But you know, I, 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 heard, that, I heard that term enrichment. Does anybody know what enrichment means? Yeah, right here. Challenge. Any other words come to mind? Enriched, advanced, a little better. Enhanced. Enriched means to make more valuable. To make better. Yes. Okay, so Battle of the Books Enrichment Program. Ah, it must make my experience at school a little bit better, a little bit more valuable. I can take a little bit more away. So I did a little more research and found out what Battle of the Books was. Well, it was this reading program that my fifth grade, fourth grade kid could be part of. Ben comes home, I said, you hear about that Battle of the Books program? Ah, yeah, some reading program. I said, well, are you going to join? He says, I don't think so. I got soccer. Ben plays a lot of soccer. Pretty much all he does is play soccer on a couple different teams. I said, well, you better look at that. It's, it's, uh, I think that's something we want to do. On well, my house, if there's something to be enriched, you're going to get enriched. So he, was, he read about it, and he's a reader, so he joined this Battle of the Books program. And no, what two years later I got more involved in it and pretty soon the people that were helping run the program in our school they retired from it and uh, Mrs. Osiseski asked me if I would be interested in helping run that program so I'm super excited because now I know all sorts of stuff about this program and I can talk about the program and I've had all my kids go through this program and some of them are readers they just can read like my oldest son can read books faster than I can by a mile. He just devours books. My daughter, she hates to read. She hates to read. But she was in this program too, so I'm gonna talk about my kids kind of and how they related to this program. But what I want to do to start, I'm like, all right, what let's let's bring you to what this is all about. I want you to shut your eyes for a few minutes and I'm gonna talk. And then I'm gonna ask you to open your eyes, I'm gonna ask you a question, and I'm, then I want you to raise your hand if you can answer it. So just close your eyes for a minute. So, you, it's springtime, it's next spring, it's late March, the snow is melting, and you're sitting in the school auditorium with four of your good friends at a table. On the side of the gym are your parents and grandparents, some of your friends, your teachers, some of the other students in the schools are sitting on the gym floor, it's fairly quiet. And taped to the, to the table is the name of your Bob team, the eight-legged spicy purple hippie starfish of mythology. <laughs> Directly across from your table is that boys hockey team table. The hockey boys formed a table and their name is written on their sign that says hashtag Bill Bosses. And of course, down the row at the far table is a group of very polite girls sitting quite quietly and confident at their table. And their side reads page turners. The auditorium is quiet, and you are sitting there feeling a little bit nervous with your teammates because you know the game is on, and in one hour, only one team will be crowned the champion of the first annual Battle of the Books at Hermantown Middle School. Then the moderator comes to the microphone and says, Welcome parents, friends, teachers, and students who have gathered here today for the first annual Hermantown Middle School Bob competition. Today we will have 15 teams competing against each other in a quiz bowl format. I will be asking 20 questions about 12 books that these students have been reading, discussing, and dissecting over the last six months. All questions will start with the phrase, in which book? Each team will have 30 seconds to write down their answer on their whiteboard. 
Five points will be awarded to each team that answers with the correct name of the book, and each team will earn an additional two points if they are able to identify the correct author of the book. Each question is worth a maximum of seven points. First question, in which book does a pig try and spin a web? You can open your eyes, and if you know the answer, right here, yes. Charlotte's Web for five points, and the author for two additional points. I didn't catch it. Not quite. Let's go somewhere else. E.B. E. White, correct, for an additional two points. Second question, in which book do characters witness a Norwegian Ridgeback hatch out of its shell? Right here. Correct, and the author is? J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling, very good. You can tell there was two different questions. One was a little bit of a softball. But the second was a little fact found on page 235 of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It's pretty, pretty good to pick that out and be able to answer that question. Yes? My favorite Harry Potter um, book would have to be, I would say it's the third one. The third one, yeah. You know, I couldn't answer that question. I read them all, but there's a lot of different books and there's a lot of different things going on, yeah. You're wearing a Harry Potter. I'm gonna take some more questions, but I'm gonna keep talking a little bit more about the program. So what is Battle of the Books? You can see up here, there's 12 books lined up. And look at, you know what's so cool about those books? That you see me behind them. Yeah. Not only that, but they're brand spanking new. And I don't know, something about me reading a brand new book, it's almost like a little extra treat. Battle of the Books is something that kids do all over the country. People take part in this style of competition all over the country and all, all different schools all over the country. And maybe each one does it a little different. But basically what Battle of the Books is, is students read books. In other words, you read these 12 books, you form a team, and then you demonstrate your ability and you test your knowledge about the books that you have read. It's kind of like a whiz kid competition. <laughs> Um, you're, you're challenged to read these 12 books. You're challenged not only to read the books, but comprehend the books. Some of us read along and we read, read, read. Battle of the Books encourages enhanced comprehension, which means maybe reading a passage twice that you didn't quite get. Maybe going back and noting certain details in a chapter, specific points of information just a little additional challenge to get motivated to really learn about that book and learn details. And you, you guys heard the word comprehension, right? It's like comprehension test, comprehension test. You do it all the way through school. And this is a way to practice that. Yeah? Ah, what if I've already read one of the books? What a bonus. You get to read it again. With Battle of the Books, the page turners in my opening sequence of sensory was an actual team. It was an actual team of girls. And I know each of those girls read the book twice. They read the book twice. So some kids, they devour them and they'll read them again. A lot of kids have maybe read one of the books. So you can get, read it again. Read it again and a lot of times when you read a book for a second time, you pick up a lot of different information. Yeah. There you go. The one thing, and I'm and Mr. O will talk about this later, uh, is these are great books. I mean, these are books that I wouldn't read. You know, I wouldn't read these books. I, I just, that wouldn't come into my game of what I read. I read a lot, but this isn't what I would read. But now, after being in Battle of Books, as soon as Mrs. O gets that list of books, I go get them and read them, and now I'm finding myself reading other books that were written literature written for junior high kids, I'll go grab one of those books and read it just like that because they're really good. They're really interesting books. So who can join this program? Well, all of you can join. 
All the fifth graders in Hermantown have the opportunity to become part of this free reading challenge, this reading program. It's open to everybody. So basically, when you join us, you're gonna become part of a larger group of kids here at Hermantown Middle School, and you're all gonna be working your way through these books, and you'll have all winter to read them. Uh, you meet in Battle of the Books. So when I go to Lester Park School, I go about once every three or four weeks, and I meet with the teams that I'm responsible for, and what do we do? Well, we talk about the authors a little bit, and kids might learn a, a, some facts about an author they don't know. We do a lot of practice competitions and fun games, helping us to learn more about the books and have mini competitions amongst ourselves in preparation. Uh, we answer questions and we talk. Kids, kids have an opportunity to get up in front of other kids and say what books they liked and why they liked those books and to actually kind of learn and discuss. How many parents, uh, how many of you have parents, brothers, or sisters that are in a book club? Anybody? Mom says, I'm going to book club tonight, or dad says, I'm going to... Yeah, this is one of those things that I like to think is kind of a precursor to maybe a student joining a book club. It's basically a book club, it's a group of people that get together, and they socialize and have a lot of fun, and, and they chit-chat a little bit about a book. So, yeah. um, so that's what it is. It meets once a week, or once a month. And you'll meet with your facilitators and you'll learn more about each other and about these books. Yeah, question? How do teams work? Like, how do teams do? I'll get to that point. So, how does this thing work? Well, you're going to get a list of books. And they're, they're going to have these books on a list. You're learning about Battle of the Books today. And you're going to get to decide if this is something you want to do. Each team resides and the ability to all the students on that team reading the books. Do you want to be on a team where one kid only read five books? Do you want to be on that team? You don't want to be on that team because it's not going to be a very strong team. You're, the team is only as strong as, the, as everybody together. So everyone has to make a commitment. And you're going to get, later today, you're going to get a little commitment paper to take home and to read, and it's an agreement. It's a kind of a contract. You know, they're not gonna take your locker away if you break it, but it's just a simple contract that states, hey, I'm agreeing to become part of Battle of the Books, and I pledge to be honest and respectful of the leaders, and I'm gonna do my best. In our school, our kids sign the contract to read at least 10 of the 12 books. And then they get to hear me say, well, 10 out of the 12 books isn't enough because there's two books you haven't read and you're not going to be any use on those two questions to your team. So I'm just always jumping on 12 books, 12 books, making a, a pledge to read these 12 books. And it's October right now, almost October. Our battle is usually in the end of March, I imagine. March or April is when you folks will meet in the auditorium and, and have that same battle between the teams. And then what your facilitators will do is they'll mark out dates. So when I, November comes, you'll have to read one book. You'll have to read one book. And then the next month, you'll have to read two books. And maybe that the next month, you have to read four books. It jumps up a little. So they spread the book reading out so you don't feel overwhelmed. You just start plodding your way through books. Some books are a little thinner, and some books are a little thicker. Some books can be read quick. Some books take a little bit more time. Well, how do they know if we read a book? And one of the things you're gonna have to do as part of the program, there's only a couple requirements just to agree to be part of a team and work together with your fellow students. You agree to read the books and you fill out a question form for each book that looks like this. And it simply states the name of the book, the author, your name, and then you have to write two questions. And the questions are just like you answer in the, in, the, in the final battle. In which book? And you make up your own questions. So you'll be reading along in your book and you'll find a piece of information out about the character uh, and then you'll, you'll devise a question and you'll write it down. You'll do that twice and then you'll answer a question that says, if you could ask a character from the book a question, who would it be and what would you ask? So it gets you thinking a little bit more. It's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It's 
you might ask Harry Potter to explain Quidditch, or, you know. How hard is it to get the, what is it, the seek? He's the seeker, it's the snitch. How hard was it to get the snitch? How fast does the snitch fly? So you come up with your own questions. Just takes a few minutes, and then you'll turn that in, and then you'll get credit for the book, and they'll check it off, or they'll have a mechanism, they'll go over with you to check your book off, and then you check the next book off, and you try and read that next book. This is that mechanism that we are going to be using. Yeah, really simple. It's got the name of the book. They're going to have you put your uh, check or the date when you finish the book, and then you move on to the next book. Yeah. Um, do you and your team like meet up and read the book together? Can you read? The, oh yes. You can always meet. And one of the the great things about this, I'll skip ahead. It's it's fun. And I think there's a little video Mark, uh, Mr. O is going to show you later. And I'm not, not sure what's on it, but these team names, let me show you. Here's the bulletin we use from the battle I create. It's just a little thing we gave to the parents and people that come watch. But here's the names of some of these teams because they're pretty good. The Red Hot Butterflies, East Hoop Hockey Girls, uh, Big Balloon, Balloon Blubber, Burrito, Buffalo Eating Bros, <laughs> Pink Cap Wizards, The Demigods, Candy Freaks, Reading Raccoons, Bash Bookers. So teams, there's that fun element in our school, and I'm sure it'll work separate. They'll have a paper that'll come out in the spring where you get to identify some kids that you might want to work with, some of your friends, or some, maybe some new kids that you want to get to know, or maybe that kid that just is known for reading, and you want him on your team, or her on your team, Whatever the case, you'll form a team, and then the team gets together. A lot of our teams at Lester Park, they get together out of school, and they meet, and you know, most parents know each other. They get together and they make t-shirts before the competition, tie-dyes or this or that, some have stencil t-shirts, and just ham it up and have fun. You know, people are dressed up here today. Some of these teams dress up in wacky costumes, and it's really a fun event. One team wins. And, it, you know, it's good because usually these battles are pretty close. My daughter was in it and her team, it came down to the last question. And both, well, how did it work? She, her team ended up losing by two points. And you know why she ended up losing by two points? Because when you write the name, the title of the book, like, um, like counting by sevens. Let's take that for an example. Well, my daughter was the recorder. And let's say that was the book she just wrote, counting sevens. She forgot to put the by in. So she forgot a little teeny word. I think it was a the or something. And, you know, it broke my heart, but it's like, eh, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> you forgot to put that down because you've got 30 seconds to answer the question, so they ended up losing. Well, there was a few tears, but I mean, it's a learning lesson, you know? It's like, got to follow the rules, you know? Sometimes the small words count. In this, this instance, they do. So you do get to form teams. You have fun. Teams do meet after school or at night, kind of before the competition. A lot of teams do. And there's times during the day, you know, maybe that team will get to meet and work on a poster and kind of ham it up so it's fun for the crowd. Just one. Just one competition at the end of the school year. Uh, in our school, we have younger kids in our school, so we have the third, fourth, and fifth grade students sit. And a lot of parents, I mean, a lot of people show up to watch this. Last year, I think the news, there was a news camera there taking pictures and the paper was there, so it's kind of a big deal. <coughs> Yeah. How many people are on a team? How many people are on a team? Four or five generally. That's what we've done. Four or five students. Yeah. Will we be able to choose who's on the team? Yeah. Not necessarily going to have all those people on your team because the facility has got to make sure that the, the, the teams are even as far as numbers. But you're definitely going to have people that you wrote down wanting to be on your team. You're going to have some people on your team that, that you were hoping would be on your team. Oh yeah, you can have, it's a whole fifth grade deal. So, you know, again, that in our, in our, in our building, that's how it works. Um, so I'm not sure, but I would imagine that would be open. I don't see why not. 
Well, that's perfect. I'm wondering if Mrs. Mannion, if you want to talk about the books that we've selected a little bit. Yep. Do you guys want to know my favorite part about Battle of the Books? Yeah. You get to spend more time with me. Yay. Yay. So what have I been doing all summer? Looking for books for you guys. Boring books that will make you fall asleep or funny, exciting, all sorts kind of books that will make you love me more. Funny, most exciting books that will make you love me more. Yes, you're right. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about some of them, and not all of them, because I haven't read all of them. But first, I want to start with a fact. Did anybody know that studies have shown that classical music helps cows produce more milk? So the next time you need to milk a cow, milk from your cow fast, they're on some Tchaikovsky, Choblin, or Bach. Okay, just a little light reading in the terrible twos. This is a book about pranksters. They out try, they try to out prank each other. Two guys. And throughout the book, they just give you random facts about cows. Super funny. I laughed all the way through it. What about this one? How many of you heard? Have you? How many of you have heard me talk about this book? The honest truth. How many of you have already read it? How many of you love this book? Yes. Katie, I'm going to use Katie as an example. Miss Manny, I just really don't want to use this book. I just don't want to read this yet. But I'll, I'll read it later. And I say, Katie, do me a favor. Sit down during your reading time right now. Don't check it out yet but spend this reading time reading this book. And if you decide you don't like it, no questions asked, we'll find a different book. Katie checked it out and finished it in three days, right? Yep, it's a very good book, very easy. This one, regarding the fountain, super funny. If you look at it, and you're not gonna see very good, I'm not very good at this turn and read stuff. It's all letters written back and forth from different people. One of them is from Sally Mander. So, this one, you have to sit and really think about while you're reading because it, there's so many funny jokes in it that you have to pay attention to. But how they wrote a book in letters back and forth, and it's a mystery. You guys have your 40 book challenge, right? Yep, 12 books right here. So you get to be a part of Battle of the Books and check books off your 40 book challenge because guess what? This one, this one, I'll get to it, I get so excited. Okay, Night of the Twisters, this is about tornadoes. Historical fiction, historical fiction. During that prophecy, how many people have read this? I put this on this list because you guys, if there's a day that goes by that I don't get this book request for at least, by at least three people, four people, every single day, it's not a good day in the library. If you look on the student book reviews, at least four or five of those, this is the best book ever, is The Dragonette Prophecy. I am not a fantasy reader, I am not a fantasy lover, and I'm so excited to have to read this book because I'm sure I'm going to love it. Or at least I'll get to know what the hype is about. Boy, I know Dallas, you read the BFG and love that. Same author. Ellie's story is going to make you go, oh. And even though it's about a little dog, it's like so powerful and just, I don't even know what else to say about that one. Terrible Twos, Pranksters, I laughed all the way through it. I haven't read Counting by Sevens. There's some people reading that right now, isn't there? Has anybody read this book yet? Okay, one thing I want you to notice, super thin, right? But one thing I want you to notice, super thin, okay? So there's different genres. There's stuff for everybody. There's thick books. There's thin books. This is so possible to get through this. This one is a mystery. This one is another funny book. And then this one is just a happy, lovely, beautiful story. And everybody say, aww. aww. That's all I have. Oh, do you, okay, so here's the deal. You're gonna get a permission slip and you're gonna bring it home. And what that does is it's your commitment to us three and your parents' commitment because they need to encourage you at home and they need to be a part of it. We, at some point in the next couple months, are gonna create our own invitation to send home to all your parents and invite them to the battle so they get to see your rock star moves on the battlefield, okay? Everybody, I promise you, you are gonna wanna be a part of this. If you don't wanna be a part of this, that's cool. Don't worry about it, but come talk to me about the reason why, and maybe I can help like settle your fears. I don't know what it could be, but I know that come the day of the battle, you're gonna feel left out if you don't get to be a part of it. And rumor has it there might be a little celebration after. Am I supposed to not let that out of the way? You know, let, let it out. Oh, let it out. Okay, there's a little party, celebration equals party, afterwards, okay? Any questions that you have, 